So there's a brand new twist to the Chase Claypool saga, and I have to admit, this is one of the most unique situations I think I've ever covered on this channel, because four years ago, we were singing a completely different tune about this individual. So before we get to the content, we are currently racing my basketball channel, The Flight Mike, to a million subscribers. At the time that we're recording this video, there are 902,000 subscribers, and we're at 866,000, but I think we can catch up. So just take a moment to check if you're subscribed and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. Now that we get all that out of the way, work! Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? I gotta admit, the Pittsburgh Steelers are very unique whenever it comes to their wide receivers. It seems like they always move on from their wide receivers at the perfect time. I mean, in 2018, they moved on from Martavis Bryant, who was looking very promising, but because of some very controversial off the field issues, primarily with substance abuse, which back then was a little bit more harsh in the NFL, Martavis Bryant wasn't ever the same wide receiver in the NFL ever again. Of course, there is also the case of Antonio Brown getting traded to the Raiders, not ever playing for the Raiders, and then playing for the Patriots, having a season and a half with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, winning a Super Bowl with the Buccaneers, and now currently he spends his day posting on Twitter when he clearly has the talent to still be a wide receiver in the NFL. This past offseason, the Pittsburgh Steelers banished Deontay Johnson to the Carolina Panthers. I really thought that this was a punishment to Deontay Johnson because apparently he was getting into some issues behind the scenes with some Steelers coaches. There are instances where he wasn't even willing to run block and was missing assignments. And then of course there was Juju Smith-Schuster who just wasn't signed to a long-term contract, went to the Kansas City Chiefs, won a Super Bowl, finessed the Patriots into paying him a significant sum of money, ruined Mac Jones's career in the process, but he's getting paid bank to do it right now. Sandwiched between all of these Pittsburgh Steelers wide receivers is none other than Chase Claypool. An individual that didn't have the talent level of Antonio Brown, but there was a point where it seemed like Chase Claypool was destined to be a top three wide receiver in the NFL. And I'm being completely serious. This man was called the Maple Megatron for crying out loud. And in his rookie season, he was trending in that direction. I know it's absurd when you think about it, but we're talking about a wide receiver that was six foot four with a 238 pound frame. I brought in nine touchdowns in his rookie season alone and almost 900 receiving yards. But the problem was from his rookie season and on Chase Claypool would regress mightily and in the beginning people thought Claypool was just a little bit too cocky maybe you shouldn't be doing all of these TikTok dances with Juju Smith-Schuster as your team is on a crazy winning streak in your sophomore year but people were really starting to call out Chase Claypool's lack of focus towards the end of the 2021 season during a game against the Minnesota Vikings on a fourth and one where he was able to get the conversion on fourth and one but the Pittsburgh Steelers had no timeouts left and he decided decided to waste five seconds by celebrating the first down, and inevitably the Pittsburgh Steelers would lose the game and a lot of the blame finger went on to Chase Claypool. The craziest part about this is Chase Claypool would blame his own teammate for doing this. Chase, why celebrate the first down there late? It obviously cost your team a few seconds. Yeah, um, you know, definitely gotta be better. Uh, I got tackled near the hash, did my little first down point, and uh, went to hand the ball to the ref. He had just got there. Right. Um, so even if I got right up, if you look for him, he's put in there. So he, he ran down the field to come get the ball. The ball got knocked out of my hands. That's what cost us time. Um, but I definitely do have to be better. Uh, I knew the situation. I knew, you know, I know I'm near the hash. I know the ball's placed on the hash. But I got to be better, and uh, the ball should get knocked out of my hands. should be fucking and this would be a recurring theme in his career. Claypool would never hold himself accountable for his own mistakes, would show a clear lack of focus, and his work ethic left a lot to be desired. And the frustrating thing about this is he had the tools to be one of the best wide receivers in the entire NFL. Following this, Mike Tomlin would bench Chase Claypool. Did you bench Chase Claypool for a while? Uh, I did. Is that because of the penalty? Yes. Uh, was the message service? Did you feel like it? Yeah, definitely. We'll see. 
Claypool would have a very promising season for the Steelers once again during the first half of the season, getting 311 passing yards, but only one touchdown. And at that point, the Pittsburgh Steelers saw enough. They traded Chase Claypool to the Chicago Bears for a second round pick. Now, the funniest part about this compensation is the Bears essentially flipped Roquan Smith into Chase Claypool and a fifth round pick. When you think of the trade and those parameters, it is kind of comical. I think it's probably the only stain on Ryan Paul his resume but i could understand the philosophy here you bring in a six foot four wide receiver with a 238 pound frame that was looking dominant as hell in his rookie season you put him in a brand new situation tell him you're gonna be justin fields wide receiver one and hope that he'll be motivated enough to ball out once again especially considering the fact that chase claypool's rookie scale contract was running out this was not a first round pick so he was about to become a free agent he was in prime position to be just Justin Fields as wide receiver one for the remainder of the season. And while he wasn't necessarily the greatest wide receiver one for the remainder of that season, no one was really expecting him to because you're going to a new team with a new offense and a new quarterback that is still trying to figure it out. Rest of the season, Claypool only brought in 140 receiving yards, but the sky was the limit for Chase Claypool going into the 2023 season. And this season was a make or break season. I mean, if Claypool came out and played the same way he did, did in his rookie season once again, then this is a man that would have easily commanded something like 15 to 20 million dollars a year annually. At the very worst, 10 million dollars a year annually. You have DJ Moore as your wide receiver one, so there's going to be a lot of opportunity for Chase Claypool and the Chicago Bears. And the way things would start out was just terrible. I mean, Claypool just showed a clear lack of effort from the very first week of the NFL season, refusing to even block his assignments during run play plays, which completely sabotaged most of the Chicago Bears' running plays. And this lack of effort was also on screen passes as well. He was dropping design plays for himself, which was just a terrible look. Yes, I know this ball was deflected, but come on, Chase. Claypool would get called out for this, but things would get very ugly very quickly for Chase Claypool and the Chicago Bears. There are even memes that Chase Claypool was the reason why Justin Fields was being held back so much. Eventually, one boneheaded interview from Chase Claypool would ruin the rest of his career. Claypool was asked by Courtney Cronin, do you feel like you've been put in the best position for you as a receiver to showcase the best of what you can do? And Chase Claypool just said no after a seven second pause. He would apologize to his teammates, but at this point, it was too little too late. The Chicago Bears were done with Chase Claypool and Chase Claypool would be asked to stay home. Ryan Poles would wish Chase Claypool good luck and even would say, I always look at things from a player's perspective. You have a player going into his free agent year who wants to be productive and help us and when things aren't going the right way sometimes you get emotional things don't work out then you struggle to blend in and keep resilient and stay resilient with the rest of the crew i think chase is going to learn from this situation we all will and i wish him luck moving forward throughout his career and immediately after this we found out that chase claypool was traded to the miami dolphins for peanuts on the dollar and claypool would have four receptions for the rest of the season this was without a doubt maple megatron's worst nightmare because now he entered free agency and there is isn't really anyone willing to take a flyer on him and when you're coming off of the worst season of your career as a free agent and no one wants to take a flyer on you your options are very limited especially during the free agency period the ufl has already kicked off and is underway so there's no chance for you to make an appearance there so there really just seems to be one option left for claypool now this is the worst case scenario and it's not 100 sure yet however what is very telling about this is according to Pro Football Talk via JPA Football, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders of the Canadian Football League have added Chase Claypool to their exclusive negotiation list. This doesn't mean Claypool's going to the CFL, but it means that if he does, then the Rough Riders will have the first chance to sign him. Claypool is Canadian. Now, I know what you're thinking, Mike, any team in the CFL can do this, and that is true. CFL teams can technically add anyone to their exclusive negotiation list, but if they did so for someone like Justin Herbert, they would just be wasting a roster spot so this could at least be a signal that claypool is willing to go to the cfl after hitting free agency so there is a chance he goes to the cfl because otherwise the rough riders would not even entertain this maybe claypool wants to go home but if i'm chase claypool probably the best option for him right now would be to stay in miami you don't really know what the future of the miami dolphins wide receivers are really going to look like you still have tyreek hill under contract until the end of the 2026 season jalen waddle is going to have a huge contract negotiation soon 
and this is a team that really appreciates speed so i think staying with the dolphins at this point on a futures contract would probably be your best bet but it's just such a wasted opportunity for chase claypool he was placed in so many different scenarios to succeed he would have very well been at the very minimum a wide receiver too on the pittsburgh steelers if he stayed focused and he wasn't making such boneheaded mistakes he could have been the wide receiver too on the chicago bears if he just locked in but not even showing effort to your teammates by making plays that are expected of you in the run game is a horrible look there's no worse tape to have than tape of yourself not trying hard enough and that was the case with chase claypool and as a result he might be out of the nfl for good now claypool is still very young he's about to turn 26 but it's really just a shame because his career could have been so much more and this is a guy that had so much hype coming out of notre dame and really looked like he was going to fulfill that potential during the first two years of his career let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below what do you think is the best situation for chase claypool to go to aside from that i'm your boy mike i'm dropping our mic until our next upload